the program. My name is Fanyo Mwindi, and I'm the host of Questions of the Day. Now, can you believe it? This is my 100th episode doing Questions of the Day. Time really has gone by so quickly. And over the last 100 episodes, we have talked to so many people, so many different stakeholders within civic science. And along that journey, I have learned a lot. And we in this program have also grown as a response and as we have learned uh, from all our guests. We have literally traveled the world as far as Bogota, Colombia, to Puerto Rico, and several other places, all in search to understand the ongoing progress within civic science, education, and engagement as we seek to understand the impact on local communities around the world. Now, I am so thankful to all those guests that said yes to appearing on the show. I'm also thankful to the team behind the scenes that have made this possible. Thank you. And also thank you to you, the viewer. I really appreciate you coming back here and listening to not just this show, but the rest of the show on our growing network, the Civic Science Television Network. And throughout all the programs, our goal is very, very simple, to try to bring the latest insights within civic science from multiple perspectives. And I'm, I'm just so thankful to have had this show um, to cross this really important milestone. Here's a look just in the past 12 months where we've been. Tough questions. How do you think about impact in a way? Right? Where do you see people going wrong? Uh, Tracy, what metric keeps you up at night? That's why, why do you do this? What's inspiration? Where, where does inspiration come from? Like what kind of data are you tracking to, to get? Who, who do you envision participating in these campaigns? Give us some highlights. So what, what are you hearing? What are you experiencing? Can you tell us more about then what have you done towards that end, especially on the community side that you just talked about? Tell us the kinds of questions you're asking and you know, what has led you to this paper. How do you fit in into that picture, in the ecosystem? Who are you collaborating with? Who do you want to collaborate with? Total. What advice would you give them? Where, where are areas can they look at in this translation landscape? New insights. On the one hand, I think it has been neglected to a surprising degree, given that science communication, science communication research especially, is a field where we... The main thing that we want to encourage in the world um, is, is not necessarily learning more about one topic, but it's uh, encouraging structured curiosity. Being in education to be grounded in science. We teach storytelling through the, the lens of uh, practice. So our practical experience of storytelling, but we also teach it through a research lens. Through what is the theory of why storytelling is impactful? Around the world. From Bogota. From San Juan, Puerto Rico. Welcome back. Now, please do tune in uh, and look at the other programs, uh, the other shows that we've done on the program. Uh, to learn more about who we've talked to and some of the lessons we've learned along the way. Now, earlier, I've been mentioning this keyword, civic science. What does that mean? Well, it turns out it means different things to different people, different stakeholders, if you will. And so in this 100th episode, I felt it prudent to ask that question to the stakeholders, to ask them, how do you define civic science in your body of work? What does it mean? And I'm thankful to those that have already contributed to this special nano series that is now airing on a program called The Quick Take on the Civic Sci, Sci, Sci TV network. And I do encourage you to take a look. Now, I want to leave you with a recent submission from Professor Marina Joubert from Stellenbosch University in South Africa. Civic science comes to life when scientists emerge from their labs and offices to engage with public audiences 
in dialogue about their work. It requires intentional activities. It doesn't happen by itself. You want to take your research and your knowledge into the public arena and you want to listen to but also learn from diverse public audiences. It is therefore about being willing to share your research but also about being willing to listen to public audiences and giving them a voice. It is about knowing when to keep quiet and to listen to what people have to say. It's about respecting the values and ideas that you can gain from the public and a desire to understand why they feel a specific way about issues rooted in science and, and, and how they form those opinions. Scientists who walk this path are usually surprised by how they enjoy the public dialogue and the feedback they get from the public and how this feedback can actually enrich their research and lead to new research perspectives. On top of this, this kind of public engagement can add credibility and validity to your research. It can make your research more responsive to society's needs and it can make your research more visible, not only to your peers, but also to policymakers and funders. So to become a civic scientist, my advice to young researchers would be to be on the lookout for opportunities to engage, to be on the lookout for public engagement training, and to make it a part of your identity as a researcher. I'm so thankful for her for contributing, and I hope to see many of you who are watching uh, contribute to this effort as we try to to understand this growing landscape. So with that, cheer to the next 100 episodes and beyond, and I hope to see you here and elsewhere on the network. Thank you so much.